Hello everyone. Today I am coming up with this thulium fiber laser inucleation of prostate and followed by drill cut cal stores morcellation. This is a 65 year old gentleman without other comorbidities coming to us with recurrent urinary retention currently on pyrurethral catheter. On evaluation, his prostate gland has uh, come to be 59 gram prostate with median lobe enlargement. After preoperative evaluation, we have kept this patient for this new technology of thulium fiber laser enucleation of prostate. We have kept the energy at 1 joule 30 watt for hemostasis and 1 joule 50 watt for incision. Let's see the video. Patient under spinal anesthesia and lithotomy position. This is the initial cystoscopy. You can see the enlarged median lobe and this is the verumontanum. Laser energy is kept at 60, 50 hertz 1 joule for incision and 30 hertz 1 joule for hemostasis. You can see a midline incision is being made from the bladder neck towards the verumontanum and the transverse incision has been kept just proximal to the verumontanum. This midline incision we do not complete it at this moment after enucleation in the left lateral and at the floor afterwards we will make the incision complete later on. Now you can see the laser fiber just emerging out of the laser working element and with mechanical force we enucleate the gland from the apex. You can see the small pinpoint bleeding which has come out from the very well defined glistening prostate capsule is visible and at that moment we can do pinpoint coagulation. This lateral part we we enucleate the gland with minimum mechanical force and at the same time we can we can fire the laser so that the small fibrotic tissues which has come out from the capsule to the adenoma is taken care of at this at this moment because if you see the the pinpoint bleeding vessels we encounter near the two o'clock position and at five o'clock position here you can see that on three o'clock position we have entered to the bladder and at this level the bladder neck fibers because there is not much of adenomatous tissue so no mechanical force will work rather we should stop doing mechanically enucleate this tissue at the level of bladder neck because well, if we do that the small bleeding vessels from the bladder neck fibers which may retract towards the bladder and that may lead to bleeding which will be coming vertically so it will be difficult for the fiber to coagulate them later on. That's why at the level of bladder neck where the fibers are visible at that point we should activate the laser rather than doing mechanical enucleation at that point. You can see the enucleation process is now moving towards the midline and while enucleating the at the roof or other 12 o'clock position we should go little more from the midline towards the other side in this case as we have started from the left side so we should go little more on the right side here you can see that at the floor level we have completely enucleated and has been prostate has been the adenoma tissue has been lifted up and now we we complete the midline incision which we have just marked at the commencement of the surgery now we are completing the incision at six o'clock so that it is detached from the rest of the adenoma in the midline at the floor 
as we have it has already been lifted up so there is no bleeding at all it is completed now now we will go to the superior lateral side of the left lobe here you can see that the adenoma because anteriorly also there is not much of adenomatous tissue so rather than doing mechanical enucleation at this point we can just cut at the at the plan so that uh, we, we do not encounter much of perforating vessel anteriorly also now what we do we we, we are now dividing at at 12 o'clock so that the left lobe is completely detached and pushed to the bladder as you can see the left lobe is being pushed to the bladder now at this moment once one lobe is completely pushed to the bladder we can have a little round of the prosthetic fossa to see if there is any bleeding vessel is visible so we need to take care of that bleeding vessel then and there and after that uh, we are satisfied on that side we go to the other lobe the same way as we have done on the left side we lift up the adenomatous tissue using the mechanical force near the apex and once we get the plan of the adenoma coming out of the surgical capsule as you can see and at that moment we towards the bladder neck where the adenomatous tissue is less we activate the laser and use the laser energy to split the tissue here uh, even if we do not touch the tissue be because of the thermomechanical effect and the vapor bubble the tissue are split by the energy and you can see the lobe completely detached and has been pushed to the bladder at this moment we have a, again a quick round of the prosthetic fossa to see any pinpoint bleeding vessel and we can activate the laser on hemostatic mode so that it is immediately can be taken care of you can see all around this this is the verumantanam and and this is a distal limit at the level of the apex as you can see there is not uh, no bleeding is visible at this moment so we can conclude the procedure by making a small bladder neck incision at this point you can avoid this if the bladder neck is not too much elevated here it was elevated so that's why we did a small bladder neck insert this is the right ureteric orifice and this is the left ureteric orifice and the floating lobes of the adenomatous tissue in the bladder lumen at this moment we'll change the laser scope for the morciloscope and we'll do the morcellation and during the whole procedure just took us 35 minutes and 5 minutes of morcellation after morcellation is completed we put a three-way catheter 22 frames and start irrigation very slowly we sit the patient to recovery where the patient will resume light liquid diet at the at, after four or six hours and the next day the catheter will be removed and patient will be discharged and asking them to come up after two weeks for checkup thank you